Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest and today's video is backslash Linux Kristoff with an updated version here to backslash shell version 2. So from time to time the developer Lucifer Conrad Reeves will reach out to me to let me know what he's been up to with backslash Linux and, and if he's got updates in place. And so I just kind of wanted to take a look at what he's got going on here with this latest version of backslash. Now, Backslash, I believe, is based off of Ubuntu. However, the installer this time around for this was the Kubuntu installer. So I don't know if he's changed the base that the operating system is, you know, that it's based off of uh, or not. But, but at any rate, uh, we'll kind of go through things here. It is a KDE Plasma desktop. And uh, the theming that's in place is pretty nice. It's... Um, I've only found maybe just one or two small areas where the theming's not totally intact. You'll notice here at the bottom you've got the Latte dock in place. And then part of the backslash shell here is you're going to see a full panel slide out from the right whenever you click audio settings or your network settings or notification settings. And you'll notice that the Latte dock will automatically move out of your way and you can adjust that in the settings of Latte dock. But um, overall, the layout's kind of nice here. In fact, I would say if you were not familiar with uh, KDE Plasma and you launched into backslash Linux for the first time, I think you'd like the look of this and you may not even know that it was uh, the KDE desktop. So some other things that have been added here that give a little interest is you've got two versions of launcher in place. So in the top panel here, you've got what I call the... KDE Simple Launcher, which I happen to like, uh, gives you quick access to log out, reboot, and shut down here on the left. And you can also add favorites from your application list here on the left as well. And then just a simple menu rundown of all of the installed applications. And we'll take a look at some of these here in just a minute. The other type of launcher you have is a full screen launcher. And if you've run GNOME, you may be familiar with this. Uh, that allows you to just kind of scroll or quickly search. So that's kind of neat to have those two set up that way. Some prefer this, while others prefer a more traditional simple launcher. Uh, some other things added here and of interest is the fingerprint scanner. And let's go to, let me go to settings. And if there was a you know, fingerprint security on this particular laptop would be able to set it up. However, this hardware doesn't have it in place. Now you'll see devices attached, but essentially you'd go in and set up and scan your fingers that would allow you to quickly log into your hardware. So that's a nice addition. And I believe on the website they state, well, it's definitely a first for backslash, but I believe on the website as I was reading through, they state that this is a first for a Linux distro. Now I don't know about that, but I think I read that in the uh, information about what's been updated to backslash. So maybe the developer can hop in and let us know there. Um, I want to move over quickly and we'll take a look at the theming that's in place. And I, I want to do that simply because if you like what you're seeing here and you run uh, a KDE desktop, Plasma desktop, then you could set up your your own theming with what they've got going here within backslash. So we'll jump over into settings and you'll see that that looks different if you're familiar with KDE from a theme standpoint than the typical settings. So if we go over to workspace theme you'll see that that is Adapta. You may not be able to read that but it's Adapta. And then if you go to desktop theme again we have Adapta. And then we'll go over to icons and you're going to see backslash icon theme inspired by uh, Le Capitaine with flatter with style. So it uh, looks like maybe there's a little extra work that's going on there in the icon pack. But for the most part, again, it looks really nice throughout the system. And another area where you see the theming in place and everything matching is if we go over to, and I really like this app. I, I wasn't really that familiar with it. Um, it's called Stacer. And I really like the way things are laid out here, and it's you know it reports on your system, so you can see CPU, memory use. Um, you know here it says the distribution is Ubuntu, so perhaps it is Ubuntu and not Kubuntu. Maybe the installer was just using the Kubuntu installer, uh, showing you kernel information and things like that. 
Uh, we've got video recording here, so you're going to see the CPU bouncing around. And uh, you can see system startup applications, and we see the Latte dock here, and the Rimina applet. Package information here, crash reports, things like that as we go down through the various categories. Here you can see system services, processes, installed packages, CPU history, and then your settings here for various languages and theming. So really nice and if you look at the overall theming it really fits in well. It looks like it's you know a part of the system as it should. All right, so moving on, we'll take a quick look here at what all is installed. You'll see a link here for backslash homepage, community support, as well as pro support. Now, I don't have all the details on pro, but pro gives you for pay some added um, support and service if you decided to run this distribution. Under graphics, you're going to see shot well and simple scan. Now, under internet, you're going to see things that are a little different here. You're going to see Geary as the default resident email application, while Gmail is actually just a link that will open up in the browser. And the browser here installed by default is Google Chrome, and that's not a choice you see often in distributions. Same goes for the Google Drive um, icon here and link. This is just going to open up the web browser. However, what's nice here is, well, actually, let's go over and we'll click, right click, and we'll go to unlock widgets. And when you do that, that's going to open up some options for you. So if I wanted to add Gmail, this link, to the browser to my favorites, I can do that. So you'll see it pop up there. But now I should be able to add that to the panel as well. So if I click on that, you'll see it pop up in the panel there now. In order to do that, you want to make sure that your widgets are not locked. All right, so we'll keep moving. And uh, going down, you've got Messenger, Remina, Web Store. So that's going to be the, the uh, Google Web Store. And again, you're going to see a link to YouTube. And I think it's kind of nice to have that set up. I mean, these are very popular uh, services that many people use and to have that set up and be able to kind of quickly launch that as an application is kind of nice um, and I think let's see here another new now I added all right I'm gonna skip back here uh, I added Kaden live and Voco screen so by default you've got VLC media player installed as well as cheese now here was another interesting choice I thought under office instead of the more traditional LibreOffice that's typically what you see uh, open Office is in place. Under Settings, you're going to see a backup tool here. So you go in and simply choose what folder to save to and create those important backups. All right, moving on here under System, you've got Discover. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. I'll launch into Discover. I had a few issues there that I want to just let you know about. And we're going to go over into Info Center, and this will give us a quick look here. Um, so we don't have the latest Plasma Desktop. We're at 5.11 with a KDE framework of 5.39, QT of 5.9, and a fairly recent kernel at 4.13. So just a quick run down there. And we'll come back over. And you got a modem manager. I'm not familiar with that. We looked at Stacer Utilities here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. So here's the Latte dock, and this is going to control the settings for this dock here uh, at the bottom. Well, that may pop up or it may not. Oh, a couple of other things. So there's a little bit of hybrid work going on here, and that's within Maps. And I don't believe this version of Maps is, or this map program here, is uh, default to KDE in any way. I think this is pulled in from GTK, probably from the GNOME desktop. Uh, and I believe the same for the calendar. Nice clean calendar, but I believe that's from the GNOME slash GNOME desktop. Overall, the look and feel is nice. I mean, this isn't a beast of a system. It's a you know laptop with four gigs of RAM and a Core i3. Um, you know, it's certainly not a speed demon. But for the most part, backslash runs well here. Now I want to talk about a problem I had, and that is with Discover. 
So Discover is the software store or center, if you will, for the KDE Plasma desktop. And it's improved, but it's still not great. And when I launched in, I, oh well, let me back up. When I installed Backslash, I chose uh, the first time around to install updates while the system was installing. And basically ran into an issue where it kind of timed out and the install failed. So I went into reinstall and the second time around I elected not to install updates and the, uh, the install went, went just fine. It was flawless. Alright, so after that I launch into um, Discover here to see what updates are available. And there were about 205 packages, no big deal. So I hit select all and went in to do the update and was getting a pop-up error message uh, telling me that I needed to do dpackage configure A within the terminal. You'll just do that under uh, sudo. Uh, you'll see the command there, uh, but you'll you'll just go into sudo dpackage uh, hyphen hyphen configure hyphen A and update that manually through the terminal. And then once that's done, you should be able to go right back into Discover and then do the full update. So, you know, the 250 packages updated in probably 10 minutes or so. Depends on your connection, your speed. Uh, once that update happened, it resolved another issue I had that I wanted to tell you about. So when I first launched into Discover, went in and saw there were all these updates, I went down to multimedia because I was going to see what was already installed you know, on the multimedia side, uh, or what I wanted to install from the multimedia side that was that was showing up, and it was blank. It just sat there blank for a few minutes. I thought, well, maybe it's just slow populating, so I kind of bounced around. But no, it it stayed blank as if there was nothing in the category. Well, you can see after the update um, that all changed, and I was able to go in and add Caden Live and and. Um, I think that's all I added from there. I, I added uh, Voco screen from a deb file. So, uh, and it was the same with Office as well. Office was blank. There was nothing populating there. And then after the update, everything pulled in just fine. So the manual package config probably fixed all of that so that the updates and everything else could show up properly. So other than that, it's the only issue I had. And now everything seems to be working fine. So if you're fond of KDE and you know you've got an Ubuntu base here and you like what's going on with the theming and the layout, uh, which I think is particularly nice, um, then you may want to give backslash Christoph a try. Well, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching.